Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today I'm bringing you the long-awaited Japanese battleship guide. I know I put the poll up for this video probably almost two weeks ago now, uh, but again, just with some stuff that I've been working on, it kind of got pushed to the back, but it's here now. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. So the Japanese battleship line is legitimately one of the oldest battleship lines in the game, tied, of course, with the American battleship line. Back in the day, all you had to choose from for tier 10 battleships were the Montana and the Yamato, or Yamato, depending upon who you ask, or as I like to, ca as I like to call it, the Yami. You can certainly see the age in the models of the Japanese battleships. They are not exactly high in quality, except for the Yami, and their lack of a true gimmick like modern lines. Ironically, unlike the other battleship lines that we've covered thus far, the Americans and the Germans, the Japanese battleships are still considered to be in the meta, despite being one of the oldest battleship lines. So today I'm going to tell you guys how to bring honor to the Emperor in 2020. Alright, so we're going to ta start off with the concept of the Japanese battleships. So the all-around concept for the Japanese battleships is broken up into, into two groups. The battle cruisers from tier 4 to 8, and the thick ships from tier 9 to 10, the super dreadnoughts. So let's start with the battle cruisers. Unlike most lines, all of these ships actually existed in one form or another, so that's a plus for history buffs out there. So the overall, overall concept and playstyle of these ships from tier 4 to 8 are extremely similar. These ships are quick, fairly maneuverable, usually have large caliber guns for their tiers. Actually, they usually have the largest caliber guns for their tiers, but that has changed with some ships being introduced now. And they are accurate at long range. The only gimmick that these Japanese ships have is their accuracy at range. The further the range, the better the dispersion. The closer the range, the worse. The sweet spot for this gimmick is usually three quarters of the maximum range of the ship. The idea of these battle cruisers is that you use your speed and run around with your large guns behind your team and support them with concentrating fire. Now this does not mean you stay at maximum range and never push in. Aiming at max range, even with the Japanese dispersion, is fairly tricky and generally a waste of time. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Staying just behind your team, supporting them with fire, is ideally how you should be playing the Japanese uh, battleships, even for the Super Dreadnoughts as well. Also make sure you angle at incoming rounds and play with your throttle to throw off the aim of the enemy. Especially with torpedoes, because a lot of these ships are large and long and stretched out, and it's incredibly easy to eat some torpedoes if you aren't paying attention. Japanese battle cruisers are also good at kiting their gun angles are decent on most of the ships to get most of your guns on target while the battle cruisers have enough speed to stay out of the effective range of the other battleships. So if you're on a flank and that flank falls you can easily kite away and inflict the maximum damage on the enemy and be a thorn in their side. If played right you should also have a good chunk of your health intact by the end of the match. So you can confidently move in with your team and clean up the rest of the enemy team. Now, of course, the prize for being a battle cruiser is armor. The majority of the battle cruisers are fairly squishy, especially the Nagato, from my experience from grinding up the Japanese battleship line. So keep that in mind when when you consider pushing in. Highlights of the line are the battle cruiser of the of the battle cruiser portion of the line. Or, of course, the Congo, the Tier 5, which can get up to over 30 knots at Tier 5 with the speed flag. So, you heard that right. A 30-knot battleship at Tier 5. Of course, like I mentioned earlier, the armor is, you know, reflective of that, where you don't have a whole lot of armor. But you are incredibly fast and fairly maneuverable. Most of these ships, their rudder shift time is fairly decent for their tier but they are very long ships, so it takes them a second to fully complete the turn. If you've played the Soviet cruisers or the Soviet battleships, it's kind of that same situation. Now, some of them are 
fairly maneuverable, but most of them are, you know, in between. They're fast and they can turn decently well, but they're not, you know, super dependent upon their rudder. And the Amage Tier 8 is another, another highlight. It has 10 16 inch guns of 410 millimeters at Tier 8. That's a whole lot of firepower that you can have up there at Tier 8. And the Amagi is pretty much the pinnacle of this battle cruiser design. Now, the Amagi that we have is more of a battleship because of its armor. If you have the key, which is the premium Amagi, that one's kind of sort of more of an actual battle cruiser. But, you know, Amagi is still fairly close to the line. It's got some pretty decent armor. Again, good for running around, not at maximum range, but behind your team. And also, that does mean, when I say behind your, behind your team, not staying in the same spot. You move up with your team and you just stay behind them and bring all your guns to bear when you can. Not showing broadside all the time, of course, and raining down pain with 10 16 inch shells at tier 8. Something also to mention is these ships, most of them do have a decent amount of secondaries, especially with these uh, battle cruisers. However, you know, there was a time when the Japanese battleship line actually was the secondary battleship line, but that time has come and gone. Your captain skills shouldn't be being put into secondaries with any of the Japanese battleships. Uh, we'll of course get to the captain builds uh, here in a moment, but I just wanted to dispel that right now. Alright, let's go ahead and move on now to the thick ships, the Super Dreadnoughts. So these ships mark a change in the overall playstyle of Japanese battleships, as these are Super Dreadnoughts and I don't know what word you would use to describe the, the Yami, but it's, well, a super de duper dreadnought, if you will. They are slow for their tier, have great armor at range, pack large guns. The biggest shot, of course, will come when shifting from the Amagi at tier 8 to the Izumo at tier 9. The Izumo is just about the exact opposite of the Amagi. It's massive, it's slow, has a turret similar uh, setup similar to the Nelson to the Lennon, except just like the Nelson, it's number two turret cannot 360 for some reason, but the Lennons can. And the Ismo, if you've been here for over four years, the Ismo used to be absolutely terrible. However, with several buffs in the past, it's actually not that bad anymore. Got a I think a Sigma buff, a dispersion buff, an AA buff and a pin buff so it's actually fairly okay now i mean i still have a bit of resentment for it because when i went through it it, it was absolute just crap but nowadays it's not so bad so you play the ismo angled bow in and using that turret set up to your advantage having all three turrets in the front means you can actually get all your guns on target most of the time, there are some situations where you do have to be that steeply angled where you can't get that third turret uh, on target, but most of the time, you can get all your turrets on target thanks to the belt armor of the Ismo. Ismo has a super thick main armor belt that, when you angle properly, will absolutely bounce anything that gets thrown at you, and I do mean anything from Yami shells to even uh, Shikishima shells. A well-angled Izumo is one of the most difficult ships to dislodge from its position. You either have to wait for your destroyers to get into position to torpedo it, or just throw enough HE at it that it does burn, and we'll get on how to counter that here in a moment. Again, hang toward the rear of your team, but again, not at max range. And the playstyle I just mentioned here, it's pretty much the exact same way you play the Yami. Now, there are a couple of differences. With the Yami, you get a massive upgrade in the firepower department, as you now get 18-inch 460mm guns, which means they can overmatch the bow of any ship in the game. You don't need to care about how they're angled with their bow anymore, as only when ships are extremely steeply angled can they bounce your shells. Now, the armor on the Yami, where the Ismo has a pretty good belt armor, the Yami technically does, but it's quite interesting how the Yami's armor worked. It's shaped in such a way that at long range, it's quite effective, and it, the Yami is extremely difficult to citadel at uh, long ranges, so from like 16 kilometers back. 
even when fighting another Yami, you probably won't be able to Citadel it. But when you close in from mid-range, so about 13 kilometers, the armor, if you get caught out with your broadside, it's absolutely garbage. Now, yes, at max range, if you're sitting perfectly flat, you're probably going to get citadeled eventually. But if you're just sitting angled enough to where you can get your third turret on target at long range, you'll take pins, but you won't eat any citadels unless some weird stuff happens, at least from my experience, and have many, many, many games in Yami. But from mid-range, it feels like Swiss cheese. And that's partially due to what's known as the Yami Cheek. The Yami Cheek is a spot by the number one turret. It's right around there, a little bit in front of it, where just about anything from cruisers on up can citadel you if they get that Cheek. And it's the Yami's Achilles Hill. Now, you do have to be fairly close to exploit that. So if you're playing Yami like a Japanese battleship, you shouldn't be in that close. But again, some situations do dictate that, yeah, you got to go in there. So just keep that in mind. If you ever have to push in with a Yami, you have to angle very, very, very steeply. Now, the Yami does have 18-inch guns. So it really shouldn't matter if you can't get that third turret off because... Your front two turrets pack one heck of a punch either way. So you still have that to contend with, which, I mean, it's, of course, still you have this massive advantage for your ship. Now, the only time you should be showing broadside is, like I said, when you are at range and you're confident that nothing has your flat broadside and you're angled, go ahead, get all three turrets on target. But just, again, be aware that if you do show up, uh, slip up and show too much angle, you're going to get punished for it. So that's, that's a summary of the line from Tier 4 to Tier 10. The Tier 3 ship is a Tier 3 ship. Just go play two games in it and move on. That's You really shouldn't be spending more than, I think, like, if you're spending six games at Tier 3, um, you're either getting really bad matchmaking or the bots are just against you or something. Um... Tier 3 ships all play extremely similar since they're all basically dreadnoughts. You just point the pony in toward the enemy ship, sell at them, deal with them, and move on. So let's go ahead and talk about captain builds now. Alright, so here we are. We're going to start with the captain build first, then move on to the module build. I'm going to show my captain build up on the screen real quick. It'll stay up for a couple of seconds, and I'm just going to have it go off as I talk about the skills. So here we go. And that's enough time. So if you want to get a good look at that, pause it, take a screenshot. So you can go ahead and model your build after that if you want. Now this is of course my captain build, my recommendations for Japanese battleships. Other people can have other opinions, but this one, it's been working really well out for me so far. Uh, re really well out for me so far. So anyway, um, now when I'm talking about captain builds... What genuinely hap generally happens with captains is that, you know, you start with a captain and you typically will start moving that captain up with your ship around tier 6. So, like, for the tier 3, tier 4, and tier 5 captain, you usually leave that guy on the ship. But when you get to the tier 6 captain, wherever you start at with that, I would then recommend moving that captain up to the next ship in the tier. That way, by the time you get to tier 10, you can have... a as close to a 19 point commander as possible and this is what your build should start to look like by the time you get to tier 10 if you're following my guide so let's go ahead and break it down so first off I would take preventive maintenance Japanese battleships are all about their main guns and this is going to help you stay in the fight with your guns this reduces the chance of modules becoming broken during the battle oh, also I do have Yamamoto so, he's actually free to get. All you have to do is complete the campaign, which is a series of challenges that you have to do. It's not very hard, and you could probably get a lot of it done while grinding for your Japanese battleships. A couple of the missions do require different classes, but again, it's nothing hard. You don't have to pay any coal for him or, uh, well, grind any coal or any doubloons or any uh, XP. He's a free captain. just got to do the, the um, campaign, which is rather quite easy. All right, next I would take uh, Expert Marksman or Adrenaline Rush, depending upon where you want to start out at. I would probably take Adrenaline Rush first because the 
lower tier Japanese battleships, the battle cruisers, their turret tra traverses are fairly decent for their tier. But when you get to the Izumo and the Yami, um, their turret traverses do take it an eternity to get the turrets anywhere so take either adrenaline rush or expert, or expert marksman first it's up to you oh adrenaline rush if you don't know that of course decreases the reload time as you take damage during the battle all right for then then for your three point skill you're going to want to take superintendent that gives you one more uh consumable so that's always nice to have that extra consumable for extra health or extra a fighter or spotter plane depending upon which one you want to take then for your first four point skill you're going to want to take uh, fire prevention because well, let's face it there's a lot of HE spam out there today and reducing the maximum number of fires on your ship from four to three that's very very nice and plus it reduces the chance of you catching fire by 10% all around so you combine that with the signal flags that you can put onto your ship that gets your fire chance pretty nice and low even though still with these skills and the flags you, you still catch on fire quite a bit all right coming back around you're going to either take again either expert marchman or adrenaline rush whichever one you did not take in the first go round. then for your next three point skill you're going to want to take basics of survivability that accelerates the repairs to modules the uh, extinguishing time of fires and flooding recovery by 15 percent Again, in the world of HG spam that Water Warships is right now, that's a very, very lovely skill to take. And then finally, for your last four-point skill, you're going to want to take Concealment Expert. This reduces the detection range of all ships by 10%, which means that since you will probably be running around in the back a lot, uh, your concealment ranges on most of these Japanese battleships aren't terrible. Um, but, you know, they're not fantastic either, but they're not Germans lo German levels of bad. So take this it'll be easier for you to remain undetected while you maybe you run around in the back of the map and also it'll make it makes it a lot easier for you to go undetected to, undetected in between salvos as well it makes it easier for you to disengage if you need to all right on to the module build now again this will pretty much work for your battleship line all the way up the tiers uh, so you want to want to take in slot one main armaments mod one again decreases the chance of your main battery becoming incapacitated which again the Japanese battleships are all about the main battery guns so you want those to be in the fight for as long as possible damage con mod 1 again reduces the chance of, of catching fire aiming systems mod uh, modification 1 this decreases the dispersion of your main battery guns now some of you are probably wondering right now why shouldn't I take main battery mod 2 that uh, increases the traverse speed Sure, you can do that, and I mean, again, on the lower tier Japanese battleships, it's really not that bad. Yami is the only really bad one, but Yami also has the ability to be much further back than the other Japanese battleships, so you don't really need that when you're in the back and you're not really having to maneuver a lot. So, I, I would go with the Yami Systems Mod 1 for the Yami and for the other ships as well since again you'll be running around in the back of the map you won't be doing any crazy maneuvers too much so the turrets rotation uh, speed just with MLG turrets is fine enough in my opinion you can take it if you want to basically is what I'm trying to say but I would recommend aiming systems mod 1 alright then take damage con mod 2 again fire suck and this helps us fight those then you're going to take concealment mod 1 again it decreases your your uh, detection range even further and helps you out with going undetected and disengaging if you need to and then you're going to want to take main battery mod 3 now if you don't know of course certain tiers can only mount so many modules but again this module build in my opinion works for just about every japanese battleship so main battery mod 3 is what i would take when you can equip this on the yami now, there is a very good arm, ar argument to take le uh, Yami Legendary Mod, but that Legendary Mod is actually getting a bit of a nerf. I don't know if it's uh, the up this upcoming patch or the next one, and I believe it's decreasing the reload, uh, the, the reload time buff and increasing the traverse speed. Don't quote me on that, but it's doing one of those to where it's basically not worth it anymore. Now, Yami with the legendary mod currently is very, very, very accurate. It has great dispersion, 
and you do get the best of both worlds. But if you do take the main battery mod 3, you can get like a 25 second reload. Uh, let me check my Yami right now. You can get a yeah a 26.4 second reload on 18 inch guns that don't care about bow armor. In my book, that DPM makes up for the uh, <laughs> the the dispersion that you that you lose. Now, of course, this does also affect your traverse speed. You get a 13% penalty to your traverse speed with main battery mod three. But with the legendary module, you actually get a 19% reduction to your traverse speed. So with the legendary module, the turrets feel like absolute cement. And again, if you're playing Yammy in the back, that's not that big of a deal. But remember what I said earlier, late game when you need to push up to help your team wipe up the enemy team, having that turret uh, nerf of 19%, almost 20%, that absolutely sucks. And, in my opinion, main battery mod 3 would be the better choice. But, right now, before they nerfed the legendary module of on Yemi, you could take that as well. That's up to you guys. Also, with the consumables on the Japanese battleships, most of them you can equip either a fighter plane or a spotter plane. Uh, spotter plane is a very popular choice, uh, which, of course, I've used before on my Yemi when I really wanted to just get some really long shots in. And, yeah, it's fantastic to have a range of like 30 something kilometers in the game on Yami and of course it gives you that boost to all the ships as well but with the current state of CVs I've started taking fighter um, the catapult fighter a lot more because with the way AA works your only real chance of uh, shooting down planes when you really need to shoot down planes is with that fighter consumable even though it doesn't work all the time when it does work, it works extremely well, so that's what I've been taking. Again, you can take Spotter if you want. It's a perfectly fine choice. It makes perfect sense for the Japanese battleships, but with the current state of AA and the Japanese battleships not really having the best AA overall, I've been taking Fighter. That's what I've been doing, but again, that's up to you guys, and the rest of the guide, if you follow it, you should have a very fun time in the Japanese battleships. Overall, the line... I wasn't that big of a fan of it because I don't really like the sitting in the back and sniping type of play style. Well, I guess with tier 4 to 8, it's actually running in the back and, and sniping. But they are still a very good class of battleships. They've withstand, uh, withstood the uh, all the meta changes and all the HE spam. And the Yami is still one of the best tier 10 battleships that you can grind to right now and I would recommend you grind to the Yammy because again 18 inch guns you don't give a crap about bow armor and they are rather quite accurate at you know 15 kilometers out so that's the Japanese battleships and that is my guide to them let me know in the comments down below uh, do you agree with what I said are there some disparities some things you don't agree on how do you play Japanese BBs if you're uh, a veteran player but Anyway, guys, hope you enjoy the video, and hope you're having a wonderful Thursday. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We are on our way to 5,000 subscribers, and we are actually getting very close to being only 800 subs away from that goal, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. So again, guys, hope you're having a great day, and hope to catch you guys in the next one.